previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. We are going to Marnborn. There aren't any disappearances around here. If you would like to have a meal, spend the night. He introduces you to his wife, Carla. You all have a dream of a man with five faces standing in the square, sweeping dirt, just like Jet had done earlier, and you see it form around something hovering in the sky. You wake as Caw Caw goes, <coughs> You make your way downstairs. Elon is wiping down the tables and says, Oh, good morning. How's Carla doing today? Who's Carla? I want to go to the exact spot in the that dream. Hellaros was standing in the dream. Watch this. Scoop up the dust with the mage hand. Fly it up. Sprinkle it down. Kaka suddenly comes streaking back. It's coming out of the well! Dust is sprinkling down. It settles. I shout as viciously as I can at him. In Draconic, I see you. I'm going to shoot it. Javelin, my great sword. And suddenly the thing that you could not see is visible. A long spindly neck, dark eyes, void of light, disappearing in between the buildings. And I'll be pursuing via rooftop. Going towards the well. I jump on Brixius' shoulder. <laughs> Double cannonball? You see me Naruto run vertically down the well. <laughs> I'm going to do a swan dive. It's dark. Could I cast uh, Dancing Lights? You see bones. Carla is staring at you. Carla. Suddenly a head snaps forward, dragging four of your companions into the darkness. How many heads are there? I am going to misty step out of the grapple. Hellas rebuke. Yeah, this thing's fucking biting me. I want to stick my hands in its fucking eye sockets and new burning hands. Cast create bonfire back where like all the heads are coming from. Chadley goes. (laughs) This guy's been hanging out with Prothean. (laughs) My sister hated this one. Black tentacles shoot out from the ground. I'm going to kill it. It shrieks in pain, and all the heads get sucked back into its body, cocking around like an exorcism movie, as it slowly, slowly stops. Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me today, I have Matt Smith. <sighs> Eric Nemeth. Gundag, Fraulein. Brad Richards. Hey, Paul, what's my favorite game? Throw Throw Burrito. Nope. Dungeons and dragging these nuts on your forehead, boy. What up? <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked. Ben Renfro. What's the difference between two dicks and a joke? You can't take a joke. Ah, but you uh, can take two dicks. Uh, That's fair. Brad Renfro. I have nothing appropriate to say for our <laughs> intro tonight. <laughs> we are a fifth edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. This is our 52nd episode. Uh, we just finished. We just finished uh-huh. a two part episode or a two part series with a guest, Tyler Vidito. And um, yeah. Did you miss Eric? No, I got him. He said, like, Guten Tag. Oh, yeah. Guten Tag, right Freudlein. Okay. Jeez. Way to pay attention. Not paying, yeah, not paying attention. Yeah, because I, I can actually hear Eric now for the first time ever since we've started recording this podcast, like, clearly and loudly, and it's awesome. That would be very problematic if we had gone 50 episodes and you couldn't actually hear him. It's, it, I really have to focus hard as hell to hear him. Brad, do you remember back down at school when we used to have to try to listen to Eric talk? And it was so quiet that we had to have both headphones in and, like, really focus on it. But, like, when we turned him up, it sounded like he was butt-fucking Wally. Yeah, so we've just been dealing with it quiet. And what this whole time since like? we've been back recording in person, you've been having clear poison. hearing. Poison. Poison. <laughs> poison. In person, you've been having clear hearing, and I just now, for the first time ever, can fucking hear. For the first time I'm in forever, forever. I saw the sky. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys ready to play some Dungeons and Dragons? No, nope. Dungeons Let's and Dragons these nuts. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons these nuts across your forehead. Not appropriate. Yeah, that's not appropriate, Paul. I'm gonna need you to tone it down a few. Come bit. on, Paul. Learn to take a joke. <laughs> <laughs> like this, two dicks. <laughs> Let's go ahead and toss our d20s in the hat. 
Oh, I will toss my D's in that hat. Eric, I got one for Jesus, you. Jesus, you almost you. shot that. Uh, Eric, uh, you'll take the red one since it's your favorite color. All right, here we go. And the winner is... Me. Oh, wait, I looked. <laughs> Matt Smith. Shit. Oh, get fucked. Shit. <laughs> off, <laughs> off the bottle of responsible beverage. <laughs> that one's gorgeous. All right, Matt Smith, what happened last time on the Death Saving Bros podcast? And you could probably do, like, the last two together. All right, so the whole... Yes. Chadley shebang. Yeah. All right, so we rolled up into whatever the fuck the name of the town was. And, uh... Marnborn. Sp- Marnborn. But lots of spooky goings-ons with the animals looking at stuff that didn't seem like it was there. And people disappearing, but no one seemed to care. And that pu- puddle of blood, that was all right. That's fine. It was fine. And, uh, I guess we eventually discovered that there was some bullshit flying above the town. And then we slept on it. Because that seemed like a good idea. <laughs> and then uh, we woke up the next morning and we found the bullshit. We chased it into the well and then we killed it. And it was a ghost a hydra. False, false hydra. hydra? Is yes. That, yeah. uh, it is called a false hydra. For the viewers at home, type in false hydra it is D&D 5E. Fucking terrifying. And shit your pants. Yeah, what, uh, I think it's Goblin World has the fur, has the original <laughs> article on it. It's a very interesting concept. When you Clearly. think of Hydra, it's not what you picture. Hail Hydra. Whoa, whoa, it's fine. whoa. Hail Hydra. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Yeah, what else did you find out, uh, right at the end of the episode? Oh, yeah, Chadley's brother of Wait. our mortal nemesis. No, no, no. Finrail. That's Bygus? Dosh's. Dosh's mortal nemesis. Figus? Hmm. Uh-huh. Well, Figus is actually just a tall, skinny halfling. Right, but uh, yeah, Chadley is uh, Taylor's brother. So. Yeah. And then ran away right after, you know, telling us that. So. Yeah. He basically was like, oh, yeah, she's my sister. At peace. Walked away. Walked away while we were all standing there in shock. Mm, all just jaws dropped. Speechless for a second, then he was gone by the time we were able to compose ourselves enough to talk. Yeah, and so you are now standing in uh, the town square of Marnborn, and Father Hallowell is there, and he comes up to you, big burly guy, black beard, mussy hair, and he says, Thank you so much for dealing with this, this, this creature. This has been a terrible, terrible thing. I, here is your 60 gold. Each? No, here is your 60 gold. I want to glare at him. This is Really what, aggressively. This is what we agreed upon. No, no, it was, it was 60 gold each. No, it was 60 gold, and like, I could this also... This killing, like, your entire town. Like, I'm pretty sure you can pony up, you know, 60 gold each. Well, no. I said that I would also bless... That I could give you a blessing of Helleros if you really want, if you wanted that. My hands on my sword. Well, what if we don't want that and we just want the cash instead? Well, that's fine. Then the 60 here, gold each. Here's 60 gold. Period. Each. Period. That's all I've got. Hmm. Hmm. What does this blessing do? <laughs> well, Helleros works in many ways, so it all depends. So nothing. <laughs> Is well, what you're saying. No, it could do a variety of different things depending on what I bless and what Helleros grants. Helleros is a false god. It won't do anything. Hmm. So do you want it? Eh, sure. Fine. All right, what should I bless for you? You better not get it. I want to whip out my penis. Don't you dare say a blessing in front of me. I will <laughs> smite you. Yeah, you should probably <laughs> yeah, not do this right in front of Protheus. <laughs> I'm curious. I want to be like, Prothead, hey, what's that? And I point in another direction and then be like, I don't bless me real quick. Just in general. I want to turn around and say, hey, Prothean, isn't that someone that doesn't worship Torm? And I point just over in the corner of wherever. I draw my sword head over to that corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuckers, quick, bless this Warhammer. <laughs> so, Abe, you want to just be blessed in general? I guess. All right, and then... Or Abe- actually... How about my armor? Okay. Uh, he'll bless your armor, and then, Ambionitis, you want your war hammer. Yes. Uh, Brixius and Jet, do you want anything blessed? What would it... 
Yes. <laughs> My fists. My fists. Whip out your penis and slap it across the podium and be like, bless this. He takes a fucking mallet, just whack. <laughs> Oh my shit, that would suck. Ooh. Right on the tip. Just a tip. <laughs> tip and balls. <laughs> tip and ball. Tip and balls. Tip and balls. Balls and the tip. The tip of the ball. Ball. Tip of the balls and tip of the tip. Tip balls. Tip, tip, tippity balls. Balls, balls, tip, tip, tippity tip, tip, balls, tip, balls, tip. Tip, ball tip, tip number tip, one. Tip, 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 balls, Are tip. you just going to keep doing that until I stop you? Do you want me to? <laughs> no. Balls, 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 <laughs> balls, and tips, and balls, and balls, and balls, and balls, and tips, and tips, and tips, and tips, and tips, and balls, and balls, and balls, and balls, and balls, and tips, and tips, and tips, and balls, and tips, and balls, and tips, 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 that's the opening track. <laughs> can that can that be our intro music this week? Tips and balls and tips and tips and balls and balls 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 tip. He's gonna bless your items. So and balls. Dips. Jet and Jets, Brixius, tips Did you and want balls. anything blessed? My fist. Okay. Can you only bless one thing, like, or yeah, can you like deal, bless yeah. a group of items? I can only, or uh, I can, I can only bless one thing, because otherwise that's just greedy. <laughs> And oh, you mean kind of like not giving us our 60 gold each? If I had more gold, I would <laughs> offer you more gold. But Helleros may not take that well if I bless more than one thing. Um. All right, so have you ever seen any of these blessings go bad before where it did bad shit to your blessed items? I made him cursed in any way because isn't Helleros like all the gods kind of together and there's like bad gods in there? True, but he's... Oh, shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> but no, I've never seen any cursed blessings. He is he is the leader. He is the savior of the Trugalan people. So he is generally middle of the road. Right, I'm just kind of very emotionally attached to my Warhammer, and if you bless it and shit goes sour with it, I will come back and I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, deal? Fair enough. I, I'm 100% confident you will be fine. All right, fine, sure. I lay down my Warhammer. Okay. So, Can I get a second item blessed if I don't take my gold? We No. We're just, just paying you for a blessing? It doesn't, it doesn't work like that, really. Oh, no. Come on, Jet. This dude's not a greedy priest. That's why I'm giving him money for it. Well, yeah, but Did, if he what? takes the money, that makes him greedy. So he should just do a second blessing for free? Is what you're saying? I'm not doing not a second greedy. blessing because I want to make sure that I give Helleros' blessing to you and your crazy dude over there is about to figure out that there's nobody <laughs> over there, so you better choose. He's right, starting I'll just to take, turn around. Quick. I'll just take his blessing as well then. That's not how this works. I'm going to bless him whether he likes <laughs> it or not. All right, here's my quarter. All right, so... <laughs> Prothean burns. <laughs> <laughs> so the armor first. Let's see what you get. All right, he... Puts his hands together in the shape a, of a triangle, and he starts muttering words of prayer over your armor. And then he spreads his hands over the length of your chest piece, and it it's has awkward. a slight glow to it. Then uh, for Ambionitis' Warhammer, he is going to put his hands atop each other, and then he is going to slowly break them apart moving uh, one hand forward, the other hand back, and your Warhammer is going to glint purple as the sunlight hits it just right, and then Jet's fists, he is going to twiddle his fingers like spirit fingers, and then he is going to turn his palms upright, and then he's going to spirit fingers so it looks like flames. I'll give him the rocket power, woogity woogity woogity. <laughs> And as your fingers touch, you feel something. Something you've never <laughs> felt before. As the tips touch. As your fingers touch, you feel like there's a zap of electricity. And then for Brixius's Warhammer, and you never he is going to... Well, I was going to do a motion with my arm here in the podcasting studio that essentially would have looked Wait, like he was... Studio is really weird of saying basement. 
whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, he he moves his hand in as if he were uh, doing like a royal wave, but with his whole arm what? horizontal. Uh, and your warhammer is going. Nobody's gonna be able to imagine what the fuck that was. <laughs> Here comes the queen. Like I watched it happen, and I still don't understand. You ever put a sock in the wind? That's what it looks like. <laughs> or if you're sculling water. I'm sorry, doing what water? Sculling. Skull it. Fuck is that? I've never sculled water before. Skull the water. Skull fucking water? Skull. That's aggressive, Paul. <laughs> Anyways, your warhammer is going to look like a mirage for a moment, and then it's back to normal, and then he is going to basically do like the Usain Bolt. And then he's going to point at Prothean. <laughs> and Prothean is also going to shimmer like a mirage. And knocked unconscious. But then he's right back to normal. Uh, do I notice that I'm shimmering? You do not. Can I roll to see if I notice it? No. Because <laughs> I have something planned if I notice it. Nope, because it's, it's just oh, the it. half cape that you wear. And that's, well, I guess that's half over your shoulder. So go ahead. You can roll a perception. <laughs> oh, boy. So we're never probably never come back to Marnborn, right? So we we could just murder everyone. Well, <laughs> maybe. I have plans to maybe open a gym here. Seems like a nice city. Uh, I got a 15. Uh yeah, you notice that your cape shimmers. Like looks fuzzy out of the corner of your eye, but then it is suddenly back to normal. What in Tom's name is this? I look over at the group. What you talking about? Do I see him still pointing at me? Nope. His hands are down at his side. It's fine. What you talking about, buddy? It's shimmered, but it's fine. I walk over, I'm walking over to them. Did anyone just see my um, cape shimmer? No. Well, it might be some side effects from that, uh, that Hydra thing we what, killed, like, you know. I've been seeing some weird things, too. You mean, like, the sun's right, guys? on? I mean, I was looking at Guy here, but no, I didn't see anything. No, I can't say it did. Pollen levels are up. You might have just had, like, a sneeze coming in. Lost it or something. I'm playing with my half cape, just trying to make it do it again. It does not do it again. All right. My character is just looking around like, uh, suspiciously at you guys because he doesn't believe you. But he does kind of because he doesn't know what the fuck is going on because he's dumb. As you all are looking at him, suddenly he seems not so crazy to you. You're suddenly a little bit more, like, accepting of him. Wait, of who? <laughs> of Prothean. Oh. Wait. That seems unlikely. It's almost as if his charisma suddenly went up. Nope, I don't. I don't think it did. Hmm. Prothean. Damn, Prothean, you're looking. You're looking. You're looking nice. Looking very char- charismatic. Nice execution. You're doing terrific. That's a strange way to say it. I'm confused. I'm. I'm just saying, like you. You took that brisk walk and you came back and you're looking. You're looking good, dude. You look nice. You look kind. I didn't see anyone who didn't believe in Tom in that. Area, why are you guys acting so weird? He must have ran off before you got there. He must have saw the big scary paladin coming his way, and he ran. So Prothean, you don't know this, but you now are wearing a cloak of plus one to your charisma. Uh, not not your so any charisma checks that you make, you'll be able to add plus one. All right, Brixia says you pick up your warhammer, you suddenly feel much more intimidating it's almost as if you were it's almost as if you were wearing your helmet and you had those red eyes glowing but just you feel big and beefy and like ready to kill somebody steroids (laughs) you have a blessed warhammer that will now give you plus one on any intimidation checks as long as you are wielding it well, that's really fucking good because I think I've failed every intimidation check I've tried so far this podcast. And as a half orc, I'm supposed to be menacing and be proficient in it, and I suck at it. So, yeah, that'll ah, do it. the power! I have the power. Jet, looking at your hands, that electricity that you felt, you now have an extra one d four on your unarmed uh, fist attacks. Any, any attacks that you make with your fist, you now have a 1d4, and that is, uh, what is it called? Like, the religious damage? Divine? Yes. That is divine damage. Ooh. Ambionitis, your Warhammer, 
that shimmered purple in the sunlight will now be a critical hit on a 19 or a 20. Oh, yeah, because I roll a lot of those. All right, cool. And Abe, your armor now seems to almost be one with your body. You can still you can still feel that it can be removed, but it's so in tune with your body that it almost seems to be like anticipating where you need to move. You now have uh, plus one to your AC. Yeah. And if you don't already have advantage on dexterity saving throws, you now have that. Can I get extra advantage? Or sorry, not advantage, proficiency on de- on dexterity saving throws, you now have that. Can I get extra proficiency? No. Dang. Double proficiency. So I just like it. Plus one extra AC? Yes. <laughs> what are you at now? 18 without a shield. Jesus. <laughs> I just made it really hard to hit you. What are you at, Beerage? 16. Gotcha. What are you at? 19. I'm at 16 without shield, but I usually have my shield out, so... Prothean? Well, I have a 17 on you. Fuck. I'm the squishiest. I hate telling you that. Well, it is what it is. So, yeah, you have been blessed by Helleros. Cool. And uh, Father Hallowell goes... Well, if there's nothing else, then I'm going to go and help out the townspeople and probably set up a service for those that we lost. Wait, I do have one more thing for you before you leave. Of course. So, I see that you have scary monsters in this city. They hide in the wells. I think your people could benefit from a fighting gym opened up in your city to help so people could protect themselves in case anything else ever were to happen along these lines. And I happen to be, and my brother, and uh, Jet over here is also a trainer, but we happen to uh, own a chain of fighting gyms, and we would be happy to set one up in your fine city. Is is two a chain? Is two considered a chain? Don't... Brother, (laughs) it's a business. There's two links. That's a chain. (sighs) It's just like it's a, a really short chain. We're trying to <laughs> we're trying to add the third link to make it a chain. Shut up. I think that's still just a couple. Well, are you familiar with franchising and <laughs> the wonderful <laughs> opportunities it presents? I appreciate that offer, but we know that we can reach out to Astrocane or Hey, hey, listen, you d- <laughs> Because that worked out so well this last time. When you have to reach it out It did, you came. Yeah, but how long did it take? How many people died in the meantime? How much livestock was corrupted and killed and ruined because of it? Your hat keeps t- tapping your mic. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm not wearing my bucket hat. I'm not. I don't know what this mic is you're talking about, <laughs> but what I'm trying to explain to you. Inspiration. Is that sometimes you don't have the time and it might be better to have it there. Did Astrocane send us? Uh, yeah. Harry uh-huh. from Astrocane sent you. We're not from Astrocane, you lying dick. Uh-huh. Sure, I will give you inspiration. Well, you never even let me roll fucking once, so... I, I did. You used it. No, I'm saying, like... Oh, no, to no, try no. I'm to saying, pre- like, you get inspiration. You now have it. Because you stayed in character even when I was giving you an out-of-podcast. Dog, I'm always in character even when I'm not on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he says, If you come to the next town meeting next week, then we'll talk about it then. And why? I got so many clever names that I could come up with. Well, dot, 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 hammer or hammer. Well, or the don't you think that's in fine, poor taste? The hammer. It's fine. Hammer. Well, hammer. Well, it's fine. Hammer. A How's fine, your hammer? Hammered. Well, hammer. Well, how's your hammer? It's fine. It's well, <laughs> sure. Go ahead and roll your persuasion. I'm going to use my advantage. Really if it comes to it. Fuck this up. Dead townsfolk. Ink. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. He's going to use his inspiration he just achieved. Use intimidation and pull out your warhammer. Ooh, 13, <laughs> and I would like to try to, if that doesn't work, I'm going to try to intimidate him for a second roll. You can always threaten him with me. No. Just scare him into letting me do it. Prothean, <laughs> I'm, your, no. ta- your tactics are good for some situations, not not this one. I'm not trying to kill the priest. Hush now, child. I feel like having Prothean behind us where we could just, like, kind of point to him. She'd give us, like, automatic advantage on intimidation <laughs> rolls. Um, a 13, with that, he again says, Yes, I think that some people might be interested if you talk about it at the town meeting next week. Oh, 
I might not be here. I'm going to need you to talk to it about it, and I'll be here sometime in the future to get it set up once you've agreed to it, okay? As I'm holding my war hammer, kind of swinging it on my shoulder a little bit. He says, okay. All right, nope. so we're, we're good then, huh? Yes, when you, if they agree to it, when you come back, you can set it up. I was going to say, you got nowhere but then you didn't realize it for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks away. Spear him. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm angry right now as a character. That's I'm gonna fine. I'm gonna run him down and spear him real quick and say, "Well, yeah, I spear him." And I tell him, I whisper in his ear, real soft, real gently, "I will have a gym in this city, and you will help me get it started." <laughs> Why are you so set on this gym? You haven't even successfully set up your second one. I'm an entrepreneur. That's what I do. I'm trying to save people. Wait, what do you mean? Haven't even successfully set up the second one? The second one's not operational yet. I whisper in his ear, fine, I'll be back. And one day there will be a gym in this city. Not today, not tomorrow, probably not in a few weeks, but eventually. <laughs> and he's on the ground and goes, well, actually, no, give me a roll because he's a big burly priest. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, what kind of roll are you having me do? <laughs> this would be an attack roll. Oh. Strength. Bounce, just bounce off this dude. Eleven. Yeah. With the light of Helleros. Yeah, I was gonna say, thank Helleros. I rolled a damn two. This is one of the first times that you go to spear someone, and when you spear him, he just braces himself against the spear and goes, you've got some good technique there, but what was the point? Ooh, I he just... Doesn't, he doesn't need the gym to know how to not get speared. That's your main selling point. I just... I feel foolish. I feel ashamed. I kind of, uh... My character... And my actual player, myself, is <laughs> just kind of at a loss for words when it does not work. And I kind of just back off and uh, and I shake his hand and I walk away. All right. I will see you someday about that, Jim. Yes, sir. Is there anything else that you need to accomplish in Marnborn before you continue on? Yeah. Give me up our gold. As soon as Guy turns around, spear. <laughs> I swear, if you one up me here too, my character's instinct is to one up you. And after I failed that, I might just pull out my warhammer and come at this dude. Oh shit! He rolled a nineteen, which is now a twenty. <laughs> no, that's only with his warhammer. Of course, he's using his warhammer. He said he speared him with his warhammer. <laughs> Used his war. He held his warhammer like a spear and just poop javelin scooped him. Do I have advantage by chance? No. <laughs> Do you need it? Well, kind of. Oh, not as good of a roll as he thought. Natural one. <laughs> as you're going to spear Father Hallowell, you trip in the dirt and you sprawl at his feet. He goes, be careful out there. And he walks out. <laughs> Ooh, the disrespect. I want to roll him back and wave to him. Thanks. My character is laughing. I go over and help Ambionitis up and just give you a look in the eye. Like, we both f failed everything that we do. That's the, that's the one thing we do well. And the look I'm giving you is like, the only thing we actually really do well, we both just failed to. That's not by the a only thing. Priest. We kind of kick doors down, too. Uh, I, you do. I mean, I, I guess I do. I haven't kicked many doors down. And neither have you, Ambionitis. Where's the Ooh. where's the nearest door? The glass the glass shop. <laughs> <laughs> Kick it completely off the hinge. Just walk it goes up like and flying into the store. <laughs> it's like an ambientitis in a china shop. Where's the nearest door? The inn, I suppose. Yeah, kick it. All right, roll strength to see if you kick it down. Fuck. Where are we trying to go now, anyway? Wouldn't it be unlocked so it just like opens? I mean, yeah, but <laughs> it's like a saloon door. You just kick it, and it's just like you know, it goes. What'd you roll, Ambient Eyes? 13. Yeah, you kick it, and it swings open. Fuck oh, yeah. And uh, when you kick it open, you see Elin in there, and he snaps his head up, and you can see, like, tears streak down his face. Because <laughs> he kicked his door. Do I play into this or not? What? And why you look unfortunately sad. And as you, my wife oh, is dead. Shit, that. Did and happen. as you see him crying and Ambionitis standing in the doorway, standing up, you just see me come crashing through the window, head first, like <laughs> shoulder, like I just ran, dove through the window and shattered everything. <laughs> and uh, 
Elon just runs into the back of into the kitchen just crying. What's that dude's problem? <laughs> Bricks X Nay on the break shit a wife. He just wife. broke all his windows, that's why he's crying. Oh, you're say you're telling me his wife croaked and died? That's what that translated uh, to? Wife E got killed a by Hydra A. <laughs> Ooh. It's okay, my whole family was killed by demons except for my brother, so I mean it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I uh Oh Jesus <laughs> Sir I'm sorry for uh the damages I leave him Two gold pieces on the counter and I I'm just gonna walk out <laughs> Is, Would two gold pieces be a lot of money For this guy We really need to figure out where we're going <laughs> The window would probably be More like five gold pieces okay. Alright I give him ten gold pieces and walk out Yeah I wanna go up to him Ten, ten is a is a fairly decent Sum of money I want to go up to him, pat him on the back, and leave him another tip. Say it's all going to be okay. Go buy leave. yourself a new wife with this. <laughs> <laughs> Rush, <laughs> Russianbrides.com. It's a good time. Um, yeah, where are you guys going? Do you guys need to do anything else in... Uh, yeah, I, I would like to say just before we came up out of the well, like a little bit of backtracking, I would have liked to sketch the shit and make a bunch of notes about the thing we killed. Okay. And probably cut off one of its heads. Those disappeared. Okay, yeah, those all shriveled up into the body. They, like, cricked and cracked and then shriveled up. Like, they went, like, completely back in... Yes. ...to the body? Yeah. Like, uh, there there were... So is the body just, like, a big lump? Yeah, it looks like can a I, like, giant potato. Mm-hmm. You can cut into it. I want to cut into it and try and retrieve one of those heads. You could take, like, the shriveled head... That yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, the like you had killed one of the heads earlier, and then it had shriveled and died. So you could take that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll just take one of the heads. Okay, so you've got a false Hydra head, nice. all shriveled like a uh, one of those voodoo shrunken heads. Adding it to the collection. All right, hold everyone. on, hold on, hold on. Uh, how come Abraham's allowed to collect heads, but I'm not? Because your heads are heads of children, animals, and innocent people. He has monstered. They're you know. just infidels. They're not real people. Right. So we each get like 12 gold, right? If we divvy it up evenly. It was 60 gold total, right? Yes. So you each would have had 12. Cool. I guess we're divvying it up evenly. So Ambionitis and Brixius would still have two gold left that you can add to your sheets. So we each got 60 gold, right? That's what I heard. I heard 60. <laughs> I mean, it was agreed upon several times. And Abe's very serious about his uh, his verbal contracts. You got your 12 gold. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Where are you guys headed? Prussian Canal System. Well, yeah. Do we want to, like, discuss this in character? Yeah. Should we send, like, a message back to, uh, what's his face, Harry? Yes. Uh, probably yeah. should. Well, we can either send a message back or just the next time we go to a bar, we can show the coin and tell the person there to let Harry know that the job is done. I mean however we want to go about it. Does anyone have, like, that trait or feat or whatever where they can get, like, get a message to anyone anywhere whenever they want, somehow, some way? No. No. Hmm. I mean, like, does the town just have, like... A post office? Yeah, or, like, carrier pigeons, like, a thing. Like, you could just be like, hey, I want to send a carrier pigeon to Astrocane for so-and-so. Yeah. You could do that. Um, you would have to find somebody that has them. All right, Abe, you find someone with the pigeons. Make sure you code the message so only you and Harry understand it. I don't know if he knows thieves can't or not, or what you know, or any secret languages, but you let him know about it. I'm just going to say we did it. Um, roll me an <laughs> investigation check to see if anybody in this town would have carrier pigeons, which they very unlikely would. Can Prothean make a spirit pigeon? Hmm. Not gonna happen. Mm. Natural one. Mm, yeah, there are no <laughs> carrier pigeons in Marnborn. We'll, we'll tell Harry when we see him next. He'll know. This is why we need to find an orphan to be a new Figus. There's probably plenty of them in this town. Or, or we just find Figus. I miss that little dude. Just telepathically send a message to Figus and have him do it. He was like a son to me. Alright guys, so obviously we did our job here. Shit's taken care of. Where were we going next? Prussian Canal System? 
to look for the Diademic Azorius? It was uh, with uh, the one dude. I know his name. Parmar. No. Right, no, not Parmar. Parmar Bevden. The... Bevden. Riley yes, Bevden. Riley, Riley Bevden. Riley Bevden. Is who we're looking for around the Prussian Canal. Yeah, he was an architect and had something to do with interplanal travel. And Harry working on some diadem. Yeah, and Harry told us like this whole thing with like the 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 light bringing resistant people. I'm not sure what he called himself, the holied ones or something. Uh, he the told unsullied? us <laughs> the purified. The purified. Harry told us that he's working on stuff with the purified, but we had to go here first for some reason. So we came here and took did that. And then were we Well, because you were originally heading to Principium. Right, to see the bubble guy. So we just continue on. To Principium or the Prussian Canal System? Our characters would continue on going wherever they were trying to go. So Principium to see the Dragonborn dude who was in a bubble. That I know his name here too, it'll come to me. Why are we there to see him? Zawadski. Zawadski, that's right. Because he is the me the main bad guy. And that's how we win. Well, do we want to go harass him first or do we want to try and like He's not the this, main bad guy. Uh, we could always just start a crusade. Well, here's the thing. Zawadzki That's might... An option. Zawadzki might know more about Bevden's current whereabouts as I'm well. Sure Bevden's long the fuck dead. <laughs> <laughs> right, so then... Like, aeons ago. All right, so then maybe Zawadzki then has since collected the Diademic Zorius himself. Well, it sounded like the demons were, like, looking for it. So I feel so like if, he if had we think it, Zawadzki's, you know, summoning the demons... It would probably summon the demons to find it. Hmm. So maybe we should, you know, collect that first and then decide what we want to do with Zawadzki. Well, plus, yeah, if we collect that, it'll just bring Zawadzki to us so we don't have to travel as much. So to the Prussian Canal System. We could just stand in place with a big sign that says, hey, we have the... <laughs> <laughs> then we'll get to do a few battles, kill some demons, and then we still got to find uh, f- the four-wheeler, four, four Lyris. The, the one that kind of slaughtered mine and Ambionitis family, because that's, uh, we want to take care of that still. Maybe so, he's also looking for the Diadem. So I'm just saying, as long as that is on our group's priority list, and we're clear about that, then I'm cool moving on wherever. So how far are these respective places? Yeah, it's in our quest log for sure. So Principium, you knew was weeks away, like three weeks, and you've traveled three days in that direction. Good. The Prussian Canal System, looking at your atlas of Trugalan territories and surrounding areas, uh, you know that it is also a few weeks away. It's a little less. It's like two weeks away to the north. Principium is due east. Okay, but still, I think we decided... That's the place to go. Are we going to the canal? Let's go to the canals. All in favor, say aye. In favor of what? Going Prussian to the canal. canal. Okay. You. Aye. We haven't been more clear about this. I knew what he was talking about. I didn't. You guys just keep saying, like, going there. We know. Pay attention, Dungeon Master. We know. All right. Um. So all those in favor of going to the Prussian Canal system. Yes. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, balls, tips, <laughs> and the balls. Okay, and shaft. So we're just balls and tips. And shaft and it's tips. No, it's there. It's just at the middle. You guys start heading north. You are all back up to full health at this point, which is a good thing because it looks like the dungeon master is skimming through the monsters manual. Whoa! whoa. Do we have all of our? Uh... Like yes. long rest traits back then too. Yes. Uh, and as you're headed north, it's uneventful for the first couple of days. You may camp along the road. You see some people traveling to and from, and every once in a while, off in the distance, you can see a goblin heading north. Uh, but on the evening of the third night, as you're sleeping, uh, Ambionitis, you have a dream. Crap. In your dream... You see... The location of my phone? (laughs) Um, You see a man with long black hair that hangs just past his shoulders. He walks with a slight hunch to his shoulders, and he wears plain scholarly clothing. 
So he has a vest, he has a long cloak, and he walks with a dark mahogany staff. Ozzy Osbourne? (laughs) (laughs) And as he walks, he has a quill and a bottle of ink, and he keeps making notations on a thick sheaf of parchment. Wait, so he's he's walking with a staff in one hand, some paper in another hand, his bottle of ink in a third hand, and then his <laughs> quill in a fourth hand. He keeps stopping, putting the staff against his shoulder, jotting something, like picking up his quill and ink, jotting something down, then he puts it away, then he keeps walking, then he stops, put his sta- puts his staff against his shoulder, writes something, puts it away. Why does he just sit down? because he's going somewhere. And you see him approach an enormous palace. You can see that there are guards all along the front of this multi-tiered palace, but he doesn't go to the front entrance. He goes far to the right, beyond some hills, where you see him place his staff against a rock in the side of the hill, and spider webs of light crisscross the rock surface before he enters through the dark opening that has suddenly appeared and as you follow him in even your dark vision cannot see before a face of multiple faces appears in your vision and you snap awake give me a perception check what about his light vision (laughs) his dark vision tells him nothing so like normal (laughs) Fuck balls. No, he has those shades that let him see light vision now. Eight. An eight? It's always you having the dreams. I mean, teen. (laughs) You think that you hear something, and as you're listening, you start to second-guess yourself and think, oh, no, that's just the wind. The wind through the high grass around your campsite. So you start to go back to bed. Crap. When suddenly you see Abe shoot bolt upright, clutching his eye patch eye. Fuck! Wait, does it hurt? Yes, it Fuck. hurts. <laughs> a lot. Ow! Oh, yeah. Um, get up. Get mad. I mean, why? Why? Because he's in pain. I'm sorry that upsets you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you shoot bolt upright. You're on your feet, and you're raging. Ah. The only thing that you see is, like, do you, do you make a noise, or do you just shoot bolt upright, and you're just like, whoop! Then ah. I want to go over to Abe. What the fuck is wrong with you? My fake eye hurts. Why? Good fucking question. What I know? This has never happened to you before. Good fucking question. I punch him. Does it help? <laughs> right in the fucking eye. In the eye? Yep. You have to remove the eye. The good eye? <laughs> nope. The other one. <laughs> It doesn't help. Ow! Did that hurt? Yes. Well, shit. Punch him in the other eye. Ah! (laughs) You dick. Not enough to, like, actually fuck him up, but (laughs) enough to, like... Just, like, a quick, like, pop! To see if I can readjust him. I don't know how that makes sense, but it makes sense to me. Is it just, like, a severe migraine? Uh, the original eye hurt that woke you up? Uh, it woke you up, but it's fading. It's fading... But you can feel it pulsing. So it yeah, it's some... almost it's almost like a migraine. Like something's something's nagging you. I'll reach into my ibuprofen. Or reach into my bag and pull out some ibuprofen. It's ye old ibuprofen. Ye old ibuprofen. Alright, as you're reaching for your bag, give me a perception check. Twenty three. You see the invisible demon stabbing you in the eye with his stinger. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you don't see the invisible demon. You see a horned head peering through the grasses at you. Like horned and like... I draw my great sword. Have any Does of the rest of us like anything I know? Nobody else is awake, Prothean. Oh. Uh, Fuck. It's... It has four eyes. Hmm. Ha! Four eyes! <laughs> <laughs> Does it cry and go away? It starts prowling towards you, and as it does hey, wake so... wake the fuck up! Everybody else <laughs> hears that. And uh, as you sit up in your bedroll, everybody in the group sees this horned, four-eyed, goat-like creature start crawling out of 
the tall grass with claws that are five inches long, and there are three similar companions coming from different directions. They have encircled you. Great. It's a pack of Satan. I charge out one of them with my longsword. Want to get my pike out? War hammer. War hammer and shield. And switch bucket cap to Roman helmet. Prothean, as you go to run towards them... Hold on a second. I should have known that you would have immediately run at, run at them. <laughs> Prothean's a wild man. He really is. Like, as a person... I feel like he needs to just multi-class barbarian. It's fun. It's a good time. Because <laughs> what level do you start being able to rage and stuff? Is that first level or not first until level, like two? First level, which only have two. As you get higher level, you get more rages. Yeah, but... And I only use like one. Yeah, by the time we rest. So yeah, him multi-classing and being able to just run at people in rage might be a good idea. I don't need to rage. Protein, as you start to do that, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Well, fuck. Can I turn invisible? 19. 19? All right, you are staggered, but like you ha- you stop for a second as you realize that these things are sending waves of necrotic damage towards you, but you are able to resist it just for a moment, and Jet, you could turn invisible, but as you have that thought, a fourth figure appears out of the grass. This one is tall with a grizzled face and a long overcoat and he says well now boys it's been a long time how are you doing since you ransacked my cabin Ooh, I've been alright how have you been fucking searing. Searing. didn't we kill you and that's where we're going to end our episode oh <laughs> shit we're not that long right now <sighs> it's a cliffhanger Ben I don't like those they make me anxious no one likes these so we'll pick up next week with uh, our encounter with Siren and his demon buddies. Boss fight. Until that time, if you enjoyed what you heard, which we hope you did, head over to Apple Podcasts or Stitcher and leave us a five-star rating and review. That would be awesome. We would love for you to do that. We would love to hear your feedback and uh, for you to let us know what you want to keep hearing. And to let us know that you want to keep hearing us, period. Because it strokes, it makes... Ah, <laughs> ah, ah. Different strokes for different folks, It makes yeah. us stroke ourselves. It makes us feel good. I stroke off all the time. Stroke. Strokes are ego. Stroke. 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 We just exactly. read, stroke. We just read these uh, reviews and we just, you know, we stroke it real good. And that's the only way that Be Rich actually... Pays attention. Yeah. He actually <laughs> reads the only reads way those. he can get hard. <laughs> that's right, reading. Reading our reviews. If you would like to keep in touch <laughs> with us in the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Death Saving Bros. You can also follow Life Saving Bros on Instagram for tips, tricks, and other gaming materials to bring your D&D campaign to life. If you would like to follow us personally, I am at HP Camper. I am at Benfro15. Hit me up at Ima underscore B underscore Rad. And you can follow me at B, or was it I'm underscore B underscore rad because I have your phone. <laughs> I knew you did. I knew you did. And you can find me at 1950 Mohawk Place, Kent, Ohio. Walk right in the front door. Yeah, what's the, what? Well, well, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> well, that's not, that's not Eric's address. Eric, what location is that? I moved. That's my old apartment. Oh, okay, that's fine. Send them to some <laughs> random house. <laughs> I thought you were Let like them get murdered. I thought you were giving out like the directions to like a strip club or something. And I was gonna be like, good on you. Oh, I can do that if you want. I'll do that next week. I'll find one an address. Find me on the PlayStation Network as Fat Dash Smith. Just playing the shit out of Marvel Spider Man. Hell yeah, it's a great game. It is it a really is. good game. Uh, Until next time, those of you listening in your home, in your car, or wherever you may be, keep saving those death throws. See you on the next one.
some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. The songs Evening Melodrama, Heavy Heart, The Path of the Goblin King, Shades of Spring, and Thinking Music are by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0 and sourced from Filmmusic.io. The tracks Fantasy Theme, Ice and Snow, and Lonely Mountain are music by Orchestralis. The Death Saving Bros theme song, is an abridged version of the song Run by Kai Angle and sourced from the Free Music Archive. This track is used with permission under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0. You can read the full license at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 4.0 slash legal code.